Use this microphone in your outside, and then when I come in here, I use this microphone. There's Father Pat. Hi, Tony. Thank you. Never, <laughs> no problem. Uh, ladies, I was on the same. Yeah, I'm on the and the sing the old as we charge the church. We buy the check. Process all of these things. Excuse me, I can be basic. Excuse me, Father. I think the would be. Okay, so we need we need to come to go out of the way. All the plants to go out of the blessing. I think I'm going to love plants. It's just a whole lot of things. The power line right here. The fire. Obviously, I've been done. 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 Okay. 
One second. For those who have your literatures, it's on page 222. Hosanna oh, to the son of David, the king of Israel. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Dear friends in Christ, during Lent we have been preparing for the celebration of our Lord's pastoral mystery. On this day, our Lord Jesus Christ entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph. The people welcomed him with palms and shouts of praise. But the path before him led to self-giving, suffering, and death. Today, we greet him as our king. Although we know his crown, his thorns, and his throne across. We follow him this week from the glory of the palms to the glory of the resurrection by way of the dark road of suffering and death. United with him in his suffering on the cross, may we share his resurrection and new life. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, Lord God of our salvation that we may enter with joy into the celebration of these mighty acts, whereby you give us life and immortality. 
through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel for our Lord and Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to Christ our Savior. When they drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethphage and Bethany, at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find a pole to tide, on which no one has ever sat, and tie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, what are you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord has need of it, and will send it back here immediately. And they went away and so found a colt tied at the door open in the open street, and they untied it. And those who stood there said to them, What are you doing? And tying the colt. And they told them what Jesus had said, and they let them go. And they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their garments on it, and he sat upon it. And many spread their garments on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the field. And those who went before and those who followed cried out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is coming. Hosanna in the highest. And he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. A gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ, Lord. As we recess to the church, the prayer ministry will be distributing pamphlets to those who are around us, and we will march and sing songs of joy, because this is an occasion of celebration as we journey with Jesus from this day unto the day of resurrection. We now bless the palms and distribute the palms. And if there are persons on the street so you would like to give a party, that's also fine. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise your almighty God. For the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who entered Jerusalem as the Messiah to suffer and to die. Bless these palms and let them be for our signs of victory, and that we who bear them in his name may entertain him as our King, and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns with you as the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen.
Let us pray. Father, we give you thanks for this day. This day of celebration. This day that provides us with time to reflect on your love for humankind. We pray that you will lead us in this act of worship and that we will spend this week drawing closer and closer to you as we approach resurrection morn. So bless us now, we pray, in and through the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. The opening hymn, Enter into Jerusalem. And hope that they will be blessed in this our act of worship. Jesus emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. 
and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed Lord and Father, we have assembled in your name and in fellowship with one another. Enable us by your grace to offer the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, to proclaim and respond to your holy word. Teach us to pray for your world and your church. Grant that we, confessing our sins, may worthily offer to you our souls and bodies as a living sacrifice and eat and drink of your spiritual food in this holy sacrament. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthy magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. and ever-living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Merciful grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever Amen, Amen. reading from the word of God written in the book of Isaiah chapter 50 beginning at verse 4 the Lord God has given me that tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word morning by morning he wakens wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, 
Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare, who will declare me guilty? All of them will wear out like a garment. The moth will eat them up. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed this morning is Psalm 31, found on page 504, starting at verse 9. We will read alternate verses, pausing at the asterisk. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. I have become a reproach to all my enemies, and even to my neighbors, a dismay to those of my acquaintance. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. I am forgotten like a dead man out of my I am a broken heart. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fair is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said, You are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servants, and in your loving kindness, save me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Reading from the A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians, chapter 2, beginning at verse 5. 
Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking a form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue shall confess Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. taking part in the passion narrative are asked to change their places. Thank you. Said for the passion narrative.
The Passion Narrative According to St. Mark It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. For they said, While Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of pure nard. She broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But there were some there who said in anger, Why was this ointment wasted this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and of the money given to the poor. And they scolded her, but Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me. You will always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be remembered of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray Jesus. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to, be, to betray Jesus. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, the disciples said to Jesus, Where do you want us to go and make preparations for you to eat the Passover? Go into the city. The man carried a jar of water will meet you, follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, the teacher asks, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready, make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, Jesus came with the twelve, and when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said to them, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. The disciples began to be distressed, and to say to him one after another, Surely not I. Surely it is not I, my Lord. It is one of the twelve who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man will go as it is written of him. But woe to the one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one to not have been born. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, This is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. Then he said to them, This is my blood of the new covenant which is poured out for many. Truly, I tell you, I will never drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I'll drink it anew in the kingdom of God. When they had sung hymns, they went out to the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, 
I will go before you to Galilee. But Peter said to him, Even though all will become deserters, I will not. Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. Even though I must die with you, my Lord, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. Then they went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to the disciples, Sit here while I pray. And he took with him Peter, James, and John, and he began to be distressed and agitated. He said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed. Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not as I want, but as you want. And he went back to where Peter, James, and John were and found them sleeping. Simon, are you asleep? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into this time of trial. For the spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. Again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy. They did not know what to say to him. He went away a third time, and upon returning, he said, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived and with him was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. The betrayer had given them a sign saying, the one I will kiss is the man, arrest him and lead him away under guard. As Jesus approached the group, Judas went up to him. Rabbi. And he kissed him, and the guards laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. But one of those who stood by drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. And all the disciples deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following Jesus, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. The guards caught him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. The guards took Jesus to the high priest and all the chief priests, the elders and the scribes assembled. Peter had followed at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. Many gave false testimony against him, and their testimonies did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood before the assembled group and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? Why is it that they testify against you? Jesus was silent. Again the high priest asked him, 
Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? I am. You will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and come with clouds of heaven. Why do we still need witnesses? Why do we still need witnesses? Have you heard this blasphemy? What is your decision? And all of them condemned him to death. Some began to spit on him. They blindfolded him and began to strike him, saying, The guards took him away and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. And when she saw Peter warming himself by the fire, she stared at him. I do not know or understand what you are talking about. As Peter was walking out into the forecourt, the cock crowed. The servant girl, on seeing Peter again, began telling those around her. Again, Peter denied it. This time, one of the bystanders said to Peter, I do not know what you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for a second time, and Peter remembered that Jesus had told him, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And Peter broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priest held a consultation with the elders, scribes, and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, who asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? You say so. The chief priests continued to accuse Jesus of many things. Again, Pilate asked him, Have you no answer? Look at the many charges that have been brought against you. But Jesus made no further reply, and Pilate was amazed. Now, at the festival, he was accustomed to releasing one prisoner for them, anyone whom they asked. There was a man named Barabbas who was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. The crowd came and asked Pilate to do for them as was his custom. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For Pilate realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priest had handed over Jesus. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have Pilate release Barabbas for them instead. Then what would you have me do with this man you call the king of the Jews? But why? What evil has he done? But the crowd shouted all the more. So Pilate did as the crowd wished. He released Barabbas, and then after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led Jesus out into the courtyard of the palace, that is the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort. They stripped him of his clothes and put a purple cloak on him. They twisted some thorns into a crown, which they put on his head, and they began to salute him. They struck Jesus in the head with a reed, spat on him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes back on him, and then they led him away to be crucified. While en route, they compelled a passerby that was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, 
which means the place of the skull. They offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his clothes among themselves, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, King of the Jews. And with him, the crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. And those who passed by derided him. In the same way, the chief priests and the scribes also mocked him. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried. Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. Which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard him, they said, And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to Jesus, saying, Then Jesus gave a loud cry and took his last breath. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion, who stood facing Jesus, saw how he breathed his last breath, he said, Truly, this man was God's son. There, was, there were also women looking on from a distance. Among them was Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, the younger, and Joseph and Salome. They used to follow Jesus and provide for him when he was in Galilee. And there were other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When the evening came, Joseph of Arimathea went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate Wondering if Jesus was already dead, summoned the centurion and asked him if Jesus was dead. When Pilate learned that Jesus was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Joseph bought a linen cloth and taking the body, wrapped it and laid it in a tomb that he had hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother James saw where the body was laid. We sing love, wonderful love.
Today's our greatest Sunday for service. Every time I hear the fashion narrative read, something else strikes me and moves me, and I'm sure you, you may say the same. Today I'd like us to reflect on seven signs of stewardship in the shadow of the cross. Seven signs of stewardship in the shadow of the cross. And I'm sharing in this perspective because this Lent A lot of persons did not, as we are accustomed to participate in the Lenten activities. And I'd like for us to reflect on that and to see the signs of stewardship in the shadow of the cross and how we ought to treat with this week. Today marks the beginning of Holy Week as we embark on a spiritual journey with Jesus to Jerusalem, reflecting on the profound events that unfold. The day is the doorway to Holy Week, a sacred entry into what should be a deeply experienced story of the core of our Christian faith. And the question we want to ask is, what does stewardship have to do with Holy Week and the Passion story? Actually, quite a lot. Because Holy Week provides us with an excellent opportunity and a time to be intentional about the stewardship of time, resources, and relationships. It provides seven days in which to focus on what matters and to revisit intentionally the story of our Lord's journey to the cross and resurrection from the bonds of death. It reminds us that even though we humans desire easy shortcuts and quick answers, sometimes we need to be deliberate about how we spend our hours, our days, and finite resources. Seven signs of stewardship in the shadow of the cross. We begin with the anointing at Bethany. And this explores the concept of radical generosity. Radical generosity. How generous are we as we reflect on this woman's sacrifice in breaking that alabaster jar and pouring it on the feet of Jesus? That was a sign of not only radical generosity, but of love. And when we love, we are radically generous. And this brings us to another second moment, the Passover meal. And it provides an opportunity for us to reflect on how Holy Communion and the sacraments invite us to be stewards of God's mysteries. A symbol again of the love that Christ had for us. And when we receive the sacrament, we receive his body and his blood. And speaking about blood, you may ask yourself, why are we wearing red this morning? Because red speaks of passion, it speaks of love, and it speaks of the shed blood of Jesus Christ. So we have a lot of symbolism in the worship today. And then we could look at the sleepy disciples and the distraught Jesus.
sometimes at important points in our lives, we are not present. We tend to sleep away like the disciples. We are not conscious of the moment, and we hear others talk about mindfulness. We are not aware of the moment, and we sleep away. Mindfulness is an important part of presence. And so we could look at Peter's failure. If the most well-intentioned disciple falls down sometimes. And what struck me this morning was the fact that Peter wept. It struck me forcefully this morning. Peter wept. Sometimes I feel like weeping. And perhaps you feel the same way too. As you reflect on what is happening in our, in our nation. And we feel like weeping. But we need to be for all sins as well. Because it was our sins that led Jesus Christ to the cross. And there are other things we weep about. We weep about the state of the church. We weep about the state of our families, our economic condition. Yes. We weep. But we can take our tears to Jesus to the foot of the cross. And we look at Pilate. Pilate tried to keep the peace at all costs. Sometimes we make peace without recognizing the consequences. Sometimes we get very busy making peace and pleasing others even though when we know that is not the way to go. We make peace, although we know that is not the way to go. But for a peaceful existence, which is not quite a peaceful existence, we make certain decisions just like Pilate. And when we focus on the fact that Jesus was whipped and mocked and beaten, we recognize that there's a relationship between stewardship and suffering. It focuses on the fact that Jesus' suffering offers us a model that discipleship and resulting stewardship may involve suffering. But that we are never alone because Jesus went to the cross for us and faced that ultimate isolation from his Father. If we are going to be faithful stewards and if we are going to be more than servants, we will recognize that suffering is part and parcel of our journey, but we do not suffer alone. Jesus is with us, seeing us through. Because although the cross is a sign of suffering and shame, Jesus did not remain on the cross, but he rose victorious from the dead. Another moment is when Joseph of Arimathea gave the tomb, his own tomb, for Jesus to be buried in. It shows that sometimes stewards are required to step out of their comfort zones to do what is right and what is needed. And then, finally, we focus on the faithfulness of the women and the fact that stewardship means that we need to persevere in what we are doing. So today, 
I am inviting us to continue the journey to the cross. I am inviting you to be here tomorrow and Tuesday and Monday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday because if we are serious about being stewards and understanding the stewardship of the cross, then we are going to journey with Jesus because we recognize that it is important to spend time with Jesus. To spend time with Jesus. What does that mean for us? It means that we journey with Jesus this week. The most significant week in the history of the world. What better place should we be than to be with Jesus, to journey with Jesus this week? So I expect... Is that too strong a word? Is that too strong a word? To expect you to journey with Jesus this week? Or should I just invite you to come along? Hoping that you will be here. Let us journey with Jesus. Recognizing that we are stewards of God's great bounty. Amen. Please stand. Penitential order. The penitential prayer found on page 217, 217. Let us together pray. Most holy and merciful Father, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not loved ourselves as we ought. We have not forgiven others as we desire to be forgiven. We have not forgiven ourselves as we have been forgiven. We have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ serve us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. We confess to you, Lord, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, the hypocrisy, the impatience of our lives. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people. Our anger at our own frustration and your envy for those more fortunate than ourselves. Our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts and our dishonesty in daily life and work. Our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to commend the faith that is in us. Accept your repentance, Lord, 
for all the wrongs we have done, for our blindness to human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. For all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and our prejudice and contempt towards those who differ from us. For our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Accomplish in us the work of your salvation. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desires not the death of sinners, but rather that they may turn from their wickedness and live, has given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people being penitent the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardons and absolves all those who truly repent and with sincere hearts believe his holy gospel. Therefore, we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do on this day, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The kingdom of God is justice, peace, and joy, inspired by the Holy Spirit. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. for the presentation of the offering. Lord, I lift your name on high.
Father, we offer to you these gifts which you have given us, this bread, this wine, and this money. With them we offer ourselves, our life, and our work to become through your Holy Spirit a reasonable, holy, and lively sacrifice. As this bread and wine become the body and blood of Christ, so may we and all your people become channels of your love to the same Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. To the Lord our God. We just rise and give our thanks and praise. It is right in the good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father Almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For our sin was lifted high upon the cross, that he might draw the whole world to himself, and by suffering and death. He became the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore, we praise you. Join in our voices, in the angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, all creation rightly gives you praise. All life, all holiness comes from you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, whom you sent to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. We therefore bring you these gifts and we ask you to make them holy by the power of your spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who offered himself in obedience to your will, the perfect sacrifice for all humankind. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it 
for the remembrance of me. death, your Son endured for our salvation. His glorious resurrection and ascension, his continual intercession for us in heaven, and looking for his coming again in glory, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and life-giving sacrifice. Look with favor on your church's offering and grant that we who eat and drink these holy gifts may be filled with your Holy Spirit and become one body in Christ and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. May he make us a perpetual offering to you and enable us in communion with Blessed Mary, Blessed Luke, and the whole company of heaven to share in the inheritance of your saints. With him, and in him, and through him, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father Almighty, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honor, glory and power, be yours Savior Christ has taught us so in him we pray.
interpretation form C. Draw near and receive the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ, with faith and thanksgiving. We do not presume to come to this your table, most merciful Father, trusting in your own righteousness, but only in your marvelous mercy. We are not even worthy of heaven, but we come to your table, but you are the Lord and the Savior, and the Lord merciful. Grant me therefore, Lord, grace and love, that we may be so eat the flesh of your hand. And drink his blood, that the bodies and souls may be made from every state of sin, 
second Paul's communion prayer. Eternal God and Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you and all persons in you with gladness and singleness of heart through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, good morning. good morning. Welcome to another worship service, and we welcome those who are also worshiping with us via the various platforms. And before I go to those on the platform, let me just especially welcome those who are here with us in this sanctuary. And we have Anne and Ison Heron, relatives of the late Daphne Comrie, who we said goodbye to yesterday. Welcome, welcome. They are visiting from Atlanta, Georgia. We have Trisha McGibbon, daughter of Jackie. Down there. Paul and Nikki Barnshaw, right here. Sad Mrs. and Mrs. Chen, Mr. and Mrs. Chen. Welcome. Is there any other person visiting with us this morning that I have not acknowledged? No? I said, I want to look good down there, you see? In other red. You all look good. It's nice seeing you from up here. Actually, can we need to take a picture one of the day and just show them what it looks like? Um, so, also, on the platforms, we have Paulette Boyd, Michael Gordon, Linda Woolery, Marvlin McFarlane, Ramona Reeves, Janice Carmen, and Ferdinand Cro Frost, sorry, Marjorie Phillips Hamilton, Ma Marie Salke, Angela Francis, June Lawson, Arlene Case. Thank you for joining us in our worship this morning. Birthdays, Michelle Wiley, Shirley Lacan, Lacan, sorry, um, Gwyneth Brown, Maureen Robinson, Nikisha Murray, and Judith Ewart. Any other person celebrating birthday? If you're here, can you stand for your blessings, please? Father, we give you thanks for these, your children, as they celebrate this important milestone in your life. We pray that you will continue to bless them with good health, that they may continue to worship you in spirit and in truth. For Christ's sake, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Archdeacon. Bible studies on a break until April 9th. And as the activities for this week, they are very important, I will make mention of each. So today, 5.15, even song, led by the January-February group, we'll ask the group members to come out and uh, participate, as well as members of the other groups, come out and uh, support. March 25, 5.15, Holy Eucharist, on the 26th, that's Tuesday, Stations of the Cross. And on Wednesday at 5.15, Joint Lent 
then service with Linda's Methodist, and that will be here at St. Luke's. And on Thursday, Monday, Thursday service and Agape meal. And the service starts at 5.15 p.m. Good Friday, 8 a.m. service. And then on Saturday, we'll have the Easter Vigil beginning at 6.30 p.m. And then on Sunday, the 31st, the Sunday of the resurrection, Easter day. And that will begin at, that service will begin at 7 a.m. Just a reminder that uh, the Church of St. Thomas the Apostle, it's K Kingston Parish Church, annual Good Friday recital, an evening of choral and instrumental music will be held at the University Chapel on Friday, March 29 at 5 p.m. And the contribution is $3,500. The Flower and Alta Gill, they're still asking for your donation in flowers for Easter. Please speak with Mrs. Ellen Chen, Mrs. Eltiga Campbell, or you can call the office. Keep in your calendars that Cure Retreat is April 12th to 14th, and this will be held at Hill, Hillcrest Retreat Center, and the costs are there. Registration forms are available from the office. We continue to encourage you to do your deposits. If you do not do them in church, make your deposits for mission, share, and offering. And the information, the banking information, is on your weekly. Friends, we ask you to also remember and pray for our homebound members, sick and homebound members. Remember them in your prayers. There are some cards to the back of the church so that you will not forget. They have the activities for the week listed. So please stop, pick up a card, and ensure that you attend at least two of the activities for this week. Palm crosses are also available at the front of the church here. Please remember to take one or two. You can share them um, as you leave. Mm -hmm. Friends, have a God-blessed, God-guided week. Oh, also remember, buns, those who ordered buns and cheese, they are available today. And remember, as mentioned last week, cash on delivery. And bags are also provided. Thank you. Have a good week. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Good morning. The palm crosses will be at the entrance of the church. So as you depart, please collect your palm crosses. And remember to keep them until next year when? Yes, before I need them before Ash Wednesday. So we can do what we need to do so that you can have them burnt and you can be crossed with the ashes thereof. So please remember that. And I know that we are going to be present at all of the services, but especially our Easter Vigil. Easter Vigil is a very special service, a different service, a once in a lifetime, once in a year service. I would like to invite us to participate in that service. And on Thursday, we'll be having the washing of feet at your liturgy, washing of feet. And please indicate. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Please stand for the blessing. Christ crucified, draw you to himself to find in him a sure ground for faith, a firm support for hope, and the assurance of sins forgiven, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and always.
The hand for the recession, 147. 147.
Paul final prayer. Let's stand there. Flo Gills for beautifully decorating the church for us this morning. <laughs> Such a pity that you have to take it down right away. But nonetheless, we thank them. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, help us out what we have sung with our lips, we may believe in our hearts. And what we believe in our hearts, we may practice in our daily lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.